So far, we've set up the um, our markdown file to produce an HTML output. Now, HTML is maybe less common if you're at the university or you're writing a paper, right? However, it is more common in the private sector or uh, you know in any area that works, um, you know, in IT or data science. Um, because what it does allow is to include interactive elements, right? Um, it's a browser-based output, so you can include certain elements of interactivity. I have, in our, actually, in our markdown file here, the only interactive element is you can choose between different tabs, right, in the results section. However, you could also produce graphs that you can browse over and click on, or dashboards where you can make choices of what you want to visualize. Um, we haven't covered it in this course, but the HTML output does provide the possibility of making your report more interactive and, and dynamic in that way, and also hosting it online in the website. With a Word or PDF file, you always have to upload it somewhere and somebody has to click on it. You cannot easily integrate it into a website or a blog. So that's the advantage of an HTML output file. What if you want to actually export your report not into an HTML output format or a PDF, which is also possible, but you actually want to output it to a Word file. Remember when we first opened a new markdown file, we could select what type of file we want. Let's try that again. New file, open the markdown, and um, here you can choose. You can, for example, choose also a PDF file and right, some of the characteristics will be different. Um, you can also, when you're working in a document like we were already, right, you can change the output format. So if we want to export this nice or somewhat nice report that we've come up with in the previous uh, videos, we want to now export that to MS Word, Microsoft Word. Um, we can do so by changing the output um, argument here in the YAML header and just choose Word document. Now, if we want to export this to a Word document, actually this particular theme wasn't produced for a Word document, so it doesn't work. We'll give you an error message. So we just take the theme out, we knit the whole thing, right? And here, here we go. This is producing a Word file. It has a Word formatted table of content um, uh, already included. It features our logo here. It has the normal um, text that we included, including the formatting and the hyperlinks also has the numbering and the titles and it has a, a, a table here that you can now edit just as you would in a normal um, Microsoft Word environment, right? Which is pretty nice. Doesn't look too bad, our figures here. So sometimes I do that in projects where I only prepare our, um, you know, the tables and the figures in our markdown and then I actually export them into a Word, so so-called, you know, annex or supplementary material file and then I write text and edit text in Microsoft Word because some co-authors or other colleagues find it easier to actually review and, and, and edit text in, in Microsoft Word. It offers some advantages like track changes, commenting, and so forth. What you can also do, so a little bit more of a piecemeal approach, is as you're conducting your analysis in an R script outside of R Markdown, right, you can export individual tables or an individual figure to Word right, or produce it in, in PDF like one by one. However, it, that might work if you only have one table that you want to get out very quickly, right? Um, however, if you're working on a project that involves, you know, several tables or several figures um, and where maybe there's some writing involved, I, I do not recommend that approach. I do recommend binding them together and, and, and yeah, combining them in a markdown file, which is more replicable and re reproducible as well. So other people are going to check your code and your analysis or you're going to want to reproduce it at a, la at a later stage.